Hi, thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be giving an example of omitted variable bias, which results from estimating an incorrectly specified model. So let's say we were interested in finding out how a classroom size affects test scores. So you can think about sort of many different hypotheses as to how this might work. Smaller class sizes tend to positively affect test scores because of the fact that the teacher can give more personalized teaching or perhaps the teacher can spend less time worrying about uh, classroom sort of disruptions and more time actually teaching. It's, it's more manageable for a smaller class size. So we expect that the true value of beta is going to be less than zero in that as classroom size increases an individual's test scores tend to decrease. So let's say that we estimated this model and then we used least squares to estimate the population parameter beta. Do we think that beta in this case is going to be a fair guess at what we think the population parameter is going to be? Probably not is the answer and um, because essentially there are a whole host of variables which are probably correlated with class size and also affect an individual's test scores. So that is going to lead to a violation of the fact that the expectation of you given class size oh, class size, um, has to be zero by the gas markov assumptions. So we can think about what types of variables might be included in U which are important in determining test scores and are, it, and are positively correlated with class size. One of them might be a school's level of funding, whether it's sort of privately funded or funded by the government. You can think about funding affecting schools positively because schools which have high levels of funding perhaps are able to buy better test textbooks, they're perhaps able to afford better sorts of amenities, so perhaps they can provide better computers in their classrooms. Perhaps they can pay their teachers more, which in turn perhaps attracts better teachers. There are a whole host of different reasons as to why a school's funding could affect test scores. But what about its correlation with class size? Well, we expect that, sort of intuition would suggest that a school which has a higher level of funding also tends to have smaller, smaller class size, uh, smaller class sizes in general. So although the relationship is not exact, there is some sort of downward correlation or negative correlation rather between class size and funding. So because we know that there is some correlation between class size and funding and that funding likely affects test scores through other means, this means that the expectation of our error given class size is likely not to be zero. And we can see that because this issue stated another way is that the covariance between the error and class size has got to be equal to zero. So what does this mean for us? Well, it means that least squared estimates of beta, the population return to class size, is likely to be biased. So perhaps we use our least squared estimator and it outputs a value of minus 10. Well, what does this mean? Well, it means that for every extra individual who joins the class, individuals in that class on average tend to score 10 points less. Well, is this result likely to be upwardly or downwardly biased of the true value of beta? Well, in a sense, what class size is doing here is it's doing some of the work of funding. It's going to be taking some of the credit away from funding because of this negative correlation between the two. So it's likely to overstate the effect of class size and test scores. So perhaps the true population parameter is only minus five because of the fact that class size is actually doing some of the work of funding. So that means that it's likely to overstate in this case provide an estimate for beta which is lower than the true population parameter. 